Righto. Um, I think we're on, uh, ready to go again. G'day, guys. Um, thanks so much for dropping in to another one of uh, Wednesday night live chat with you guys. And tonight's topic is going to be about travelling with dogs. Now, um, we'll get into a fair bit of detail on this um, going forward and to why I've sort of uh, picked this topic up to have a chat about tonight. Um, so we'll get into this as we go forward. But good to see a few of you guys already there tonight. Uh, go Sean and Dylan. Thanks so much, mate. Big ol's. Um, Nick Baker, thanks very much, mate, for dropping in tonight. Sean, how are you? Um, so if you're dropping in tonight for the first time, thanks very much for coming and checking out live. Uh, Tim Bates is my name. got a YouTube channel, Tim Bates 4WD Adventures. Film all my trips and uh, that I go on, provide a lot of tips and hints and that sort of stuff throughout my channel there. So check it out if you uh, want to know a bit more about what the channel's all about. And also, if you've got any topics, you know, you, you'd like to um, have a chat about on a Wednesday Night Live, drop in the comments down below and, uh, and I'll sort through those and uh, see if we can find some other topics as we're going forward. But um, we'll get into this now. G'day, Ash. Thanks so much, Trent. Uh, thanks so much, guys, for coming tonight. So tonight's topic, why I've picked um, travelling with dogs. Now, I would like to get a dog and the only one and only reason why I don't have a dog every time I go travelling, camping, that sort of stuff, is purely that two-word thing, national parks. Now, there's a stack of people out there that you see travelling around Australia, travelling around the country. Um, you know, it'd be great to hear from some of you guys, you know, what, how do you guys get around that sort of thing? You know, do you find it really super restrictive? Do you advise against it? Do you advise getting a dog? Um, you know, because I would certainly like to get a hold of one, but the only reason I sort of don't have one is purely because of um, the national park situation, you know, because... I pretty much, uh, yeah, travel through the high country a stack and and um, and everywhere I go up there, you know, it's all national parks or a lot of it is national parks and, you know, the poor old four-legged mutts there, we, uh, they can't even, they can't get into those areas. So it would be really cool to hear from, from some of you guys that, you know, maybe you've, you've got dogs and how you sort of deal with that situation and um, well, like even if you're travelling through, you know, Central Australia and all that sort of stuff, you um, you know, it's a lot of national parks up there, Kakadu and up around, up around the rock and all those sort of places, you just can't take them. So, you know, what do you do with them if um, if you've got a dog and you get in those sort of areas? Uh, Biggles, what have you got there, mate? I don't have a dog for that very reason. It, uh, it restricts uh, where you can go more. Yeah. Look, it's the same, mate. It's, it's the only reason why I don't. And it's it's a shame that it's a blanket ban, you know. It'd be, you know, a lot of, I know a lot of people, with, with dogs and, um, and yes, yeah, certainly doing the right things and not taking them to national parks. But, I mean, a lot of these dogs, you take them into a national park every day of the week and, you know, they're just, just great dogs, good friendly good friendly mutts, you know. So um, it would be uh, – it's a real shame that we sort of just can't do that. Okay, Troy, how are you going there, mate? Thanks so much for coming. Um, so, yeah, plan your trip, trip around your dog. Yeah, look, you certainly can do that. Um, you know, it's, it's state parks, uh, yeah, as far as I know, they're all, they're all no worries and – and look, my understanding as far as um, travelling with a dog around the national parks, so I'm money mainly speaking in the big high country here, but I'll stand corrected. But I'm pretty sure I'm on the money um, when I when I uh, say this. But pretty sure that you can travel from the state park, travel through the national park. Uh, your dog's not let out of the car at all. Um, but as long as you get to the other side and camp back in the state park again, uh, that's pretty much how I'm pretty sure it goes so I've uh, that's always been what I've sort of told people and it's pretty much my understanding I've never been pulled up on that either way but um but yeah you just got to get back into state parks if you're going to take the dog on anywhere he travels um Sean uh, it's going there mate so so you may feral dogs in the high country uh makes me think if there's if they're lost or on trips from people on occasions well you just don't know about there but there's still you know a lot of um the old native dingo up there, the high country dingo, still a fair few of those floating around. So, um, you know, they're not all all feral wild dogs sort of thing up there, but still a few, a few of those getting around. Um, Troy, there we go, $836 fine. And that's one thing I've always never really 100% sure, you know, what that fine is uh, for taking a dog into any of the national parks. And Troy's just chucked it up there, 836 buck fine. Now, that's a fair whack if you're going to go away and, you know, that, that'll buggy your weekend for sure if, um, you know, if you're going to get slapped with a $836 fine for taking a dog into a national park. So, you know, so just, yeah, just keen to see because, you know, I, I, look, I'm going to get a dog somewhere down the track and um, you know, I would have had one years ago if, if only I could travel with it, you know. We'll take it into, 
into all these all these places where I go. Um, wherever it's going there, mate, um, law should should be that dogs must be yeah kept on a lead. Yeah, look, and that's sort of the way I think too, you know. And that's why it's a shame, you know, with dogs going in national parks that it's such a blanket ban, you know. As long as they're restrained and, you know, everyone's, you know, doing the right thing and keeping them, you know, restrained so they're not just roaming off and doing their own thing. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see a big problem with it at all, but um, but I suppose, you know, it's uh, rules rules, I suppose, and we've got to sort of, all got to try and um, try and toe that line with it. G'day, Craig, how are you going there, mate? Thanks for coming tonight. Greg, how are you, mate? Good, I'm good, thanks, bloke. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty much the topic where we are here tonight, and, um, and you know, there's a few people certainly floating there, but, you know, every time I've travelled, you know, around the place and up through up through Central Australia and that sort of stuff and um, into Queensland, that you, there's a stack of people travelling with dogs, but, um, yeah, so I don't know, so I don't know what they do and how they go about, you know, um, travelling with them. Uh, Sean, how do deer hunters have all, all of those hounds permit permits? Well, yeah, I don't know quite know how the deer hunting thing works and with, with hound, hound hunters and that sort of thing, um, whether they're only allowed in the state parks. It's pretty much where I've mainly only seen them in, in state parks. You really haven't seen a lot of them sort of into the national parks. So as long as they're in the state parks, I don't see there's any problem there at all. But whether they got special permits, yeah, I'm not really sure how the, um, how the hound hunters work, mate. So that's an interesting one. Um, it's going to make the, the Cheapskates Club. <laughs> How are you going? Uh, we talked about this a while back. Why why you can't uh, get a license permit for a dog for a while uh, for while you're in, in the national parks. Same as permits for vehicles, people. Uh, doesn't need to cost much. Yeah, look, mate, that's probably that's a cracking idea too. You know, if you could, um, you know, just like when you go to national parks and uh, and any other states other than Victoria, um, you know, where you got to pay for a permit. Well, yeah, you know, chuck a chuck a small fee on it to. Take your dog in there, and then there's rules and regulations that are bound by that. Why you got your dog in a national park? You know that that's a cracking idea, mate. If there was just a small fee, we you know where you could take your dog in a national park, and then you know, um, then that that'd be one way of getting around it. Uh, Stuart, dogs are are a fraction of, of the problem when it when it compared to to cats. Yeah, look, um, look, they're, they're certainly both both a problem. That's for sure, and particularly the wild cats. You know, it's funny you say it because. Yeah, um, even with the wild dogs and, and cats in, in the high country, I've, I've not really ever seen a lot of them. You know, I've, I've certainly heard the wild dogs up there. There's no worries about that. Heard them plenty of times, but never really had a situation with them. And, um, it, you know, um, so, yeah, I've, and far as wild cats go, very rarely ever um, come across any of those. You know, you guys might have some different stories where you've seen them, but I certainly haven't seen a lot of them at all. Uh, Alex, um, g'day, mate. How you going? I uh, got, my, got my adult daughter to babysit. The, yeah, the dog... Um, can get up, can't get up on the rooftop tent. Yeah, unless you can got your treat, teach your uh, dog there to climb up ladders, man, I suppose that's going to be a little bit hard. But, you know, but if you've got someone to look after your dog, you know, while you're going out um, travelling a bit, well, that's certainly um, certainly going to help, I suppose, um, if you've got someone to look after it while, while you're gone. Um, g'day, Gizzo. How are you going there, mate? 63. Thanks for dropping in tonight. Uh, Dylan, uh, you can buy a dog box, but dogs are, are hard to take on trips. You know, I suppose certain dogs are, you know, it depends on the size of them, what sort of breed they are, and I suppose um, how you go about travelling with dogs uh, around the country. Um, but, you know, plenty of people do, so, you know, it's an interesting one, I reckon. Um, hey, Max, uh, yep, down, uh, deer hunters are allowed state forest. Yeah, I, I would have thought that would always be the, be the case, mate, you know, the state parks, because, like, anyone can pretty much take their dog in a state park, not just the hound hunters. So, yeah, I sort of thought that would be the go, but, yeah, thanks for that reply there, Max. Uh, boom, boom, what's going on? Um, uh, how you how you get the uh, the dogs to ru rule changed? Uh, dog rule changed? Yeah, I, I don't know, and I really don't think it's probably one of those things that's I don't know ever going to get changed. I really don't know if it's ever been you know if the water's ever been tested on that one you know to to try and get something overturned. But as someone mentioned there earlier on before, you know if there was some sort of permit you could add, you know to to um, when you go to national parks because you're taking a dog in there, that would be a great great way of going about it rather than just open the floodgates up and yeah, yeah take your dogs in national parks. Uh, might be a bit more control over it, you know, and, um, you know, you tick a little box and you pay a couple of bucks and then you can take your dog in National Parks. That would be a great idea if we could get that over the line. That would be gross. Um, Dean, microchip dogs should be allowed. Well, yeah, that's probably a good point there too, mate, because, um, you know, certainly easy trackable and if they get out of hand or get lost, whatever, they're certainly going to be easily traced, that's for sure. Um, high country, uh, what's going on there, mate? Um, tracking collars and dogs registered in certain times of the year 
for uh, gun dogs when when hunting deer. Yeah, I've looked, certainly see a lot of the hand dogs out there. Got a collar around their neck there, and makes them easier to track them and, and that sort of stuff. Well, then you can certainly find out where they are and, and where they're going, and you know, pick them back up again. So yeah, the, tr- the tracking collars certainly work pretty well in, in those times. Um, Bertrand's too, where it's going there, mate. Um, very rare I go anywhere without my best mate. Yeah, look, I've heard a lot of people say that by my side. So always spend a lot of time, extra time planning. Um, he would love love to sniff around one and gather one day if the rules were ever changed. Yeah, look, and then that's one place where you can't get into because it's all national parks. But, but yeah, over there, there's there's Bertros here saying, you know, he travels everywhere with his dog. And um, so, you know, you just got to put a bit more thought, a bit more planning into, you know, where you're going to go, I suppose. And, and then uh, plan your trip around your dog, really, rather than so much sort of where you want to go. You've got to put, put a lot of thought into, you know, into, into dog. And that's not such a bad thing either. Um, Nick Baker, uh, I've seen what uh, what a locked up what a locked up kelpie with a pup on a, on a circuit on circuit road near Craig's hut only six months back. I swear she had a collar on. There you go. Um, even though dogs are up up allowed up around Craig's hut, um, as you can see with the thumbnail photo of me standing there with a friend's kelpie. Um, but yeah, dogs are certainly allowed up there. Uh, Rat sixty two. G'day mate, how you going? Thanks for so dropping in tonight. Uh, Dylan, uh, have you ever heard about um, the Black Panther in Lithgow? <laughs> Mate, I think everyone's got a story about a Black Panther, but the only thing is no one's ever got a clear photo of it. They're always blurred or something like that. So um, I think there's a Black Panther floating around everywhere, but no one's got a good shot of uh, actually seeing one yet. So, we'll, yeah, haven't, haven't, seen, haven't heard of that one up there yet. Uh, Craig's uh, Adventures, um, my two Jack Russells love, love the ute. Yeah, look, they're a tiny little dog, probably easy enough to travel with and, you know, that sort of stuff. But, yeah, so you just got to plan, plan your trip around, you know, where, where you're going to go. Uh, Mark, hope, hope, day, mate, hope all is well. Yeah, it is. Thanks very much, mate. Everything's going pretty good at my end. Uh, so with Michael, thanks, mate, for coming in tonight. Uh, cheers, guys. Uh, big fella, I live near Lithgow and can assure everyone that this Black Panther does not exist. Well, there you go, mate. The Black Panther doesn't exist. That's just put your theory out, out the window there, Dylan. Um, someone's already jumped in there. Uh, Stuart, how you going there, mate? Uh, Greg, uh, had two had two touring troublemakers, Jack Russells, um, would want to go through the, the grooming process grooming process again after putting them down. Yeah, and that's probably the other thing too. I think you've got to probably worry about when you travel, especially in, in the bush and up Central Australia, it's the baits and stuff that are lying around too. So you've got to be very careful in that situation. Uh, Gary, in New South Wales National Parks, there aren't many things left you're allowed to do. Uh, lock gates everywhere, no free camping. It won't be long before there will be no people allowed. Well, let's hope, mate, that just does never happen. Um, you know, plenty of people like to get out there in the bush and, you know, and go and camp and that sort of stuff. And um, But, yeah, there's a few, few dramas going on there with some national parks up in New South. You certainly hear about that. But let's hope it, uh, hope it doesn't go where you sort of suggesting there, mate. Um, what about Ed's? What about what about a companion dogs? Well, funny you mention that because um, I got a mate of mine who's um, got an autistic son, and they did a fairly substantial half lap or well, half lap around Australia about twelve months ago. Now this dog goes absolutely everywhere with, with his son. Um, you know, it's a purpose trained dog, and you know they got that into the national parks because you know it is a is a working dog sort of thing as a trained dog. Um, but, you know, they did even still had some issues with um, some national park rangers because of it. You know, that all the paperwork, it was wore the, um, you know, the right sort of a coat that the, those sort of dogs have to wear. So it's clearly visible that they are um, a dog of, of, of need for that sort of thing. But, yeah, look, they, they certainly still had issues even with that. So, um, you know, there's an interesting interesting one there. But um, but they are allowed into national parks with those sort of dogs, a bit like um, – you know, we've got um, seeing our dogs and those sort of stuff. You know, they're, they're pretty much allowed to go anywhere too, public transport and all that sort of stuff. And fair chance they might be allowed in national parks as well. So, you know, a bit a bit of an area there. Uh, honeycomb, uh, oh, high country. What's going there, mate? Um, move move to Victoria. Yeah, Gary. Gary yeah, move, move to Victoria. Well, so far, mate, everything's still going going all right down here. Um, got quite a few, still quite a few um, national parks and stuff. And still open down here, so we haven't really got a great deal of dramas going on. But, look, that's been an interesting sort of a, you know, interesting sort of a topic tonight. Um, you know, I don't know when I'm going to get to that stage where I'll just bite the bullet and, and go and get myself a dog because, um, you know, I, I would absolutely love to be travelling, you know, with my best mate sitting beside me there and um, on going all my travels. 
Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll just have to keep keep that sort of door open for the moment and um, see what I end up doing with it down the track. Um, Alex, it's really difficult to register a companion dog when looked looked into it before. Well, there you go. Um, so it's interesting. Yeah, okay. To register a companion dog. Yeah, right. Um, that's an interesting one there for sure. Um, big fella, too many rules in national parks in New South Wales. I keep away from them. And that's a shame for our mate because look at national parks, you know, down here, you know, especially Alpine National Parks, that's where I spend a lot of my time up in there. You know, they're absolutely magnificent country and, um, you know, it's absolutely beautiful. So you certainly do spend a lot of time up in there, but um, we'll just have to have to see see where it all goes. Well, there you go, guys. We might wrap it up, but it's, look, it's been some great feedback coming through there and, and one in that particular way back up the, up the track up there was a damn great idea, you know, if we could only, you know, when, when you get the permits for your national parks, if you could just tick a box and, you know, there's going to be taking your dog with you. Well, you know that that could be um, could be certainly an option if that's a possibility down, down the track. And then and then that way, you know, the, the parks and national park rangers and stuff got a little bit of control over knowing how many dogs now are coming into the area and um, you know and, and where they're going to go and where they're going to be. So you know, that's probably not such a bad idea. Um, Max, what if you get a dingo? Well, that's that's a very interesting one there too because I got a, I know a friend of mine who's. Um, who's got two Alpine dingoes, fully licensed and registered to, to have them at home. And um, that's been one question that's, that uh, she certainly brought up with the possibility of taking Alpine dingoes into national parks up in the high country because at the end of the day they're a native dog up there. So, um, yeah, that's a very, very interesting and, and um, open topic to chat about some other time. Um, next week's topic. Next week's topic I think I'm – you know, I've done a couple of these with Facebook and I think we might do one with Facebook, with our YouTube guys. But it'd be good just to have a chat with some of you dudes and um, how you going on to, in these lockdown zones, how you, how you handling this damn COVID situation. Um, so it'd be really great if we hear from many of you guys, particularly the ones that are stuck down there in Melbourne at the moment, you know, that can't get out and go about. So I've done a couple of these sort of chats on Facebook, so I think we might do one of these next week, and it'd be great to hear from as many of you as we as we can. Let's hear your stories. Let's hear how you're going. Are you dealing with it? Um, it'd be really interesting to hear. So there you go, guys. Um, we'll wrap this up tonight. Thanks very much again for everyone who's dropped in tonight, everyone who's contributed. Um, some really great, great feedback coming through there on, on this particular topic because it is a pretty hot topic and and one we certainly want to know a little bit more about how we can go about doing it, where we can travel travel around this great country, around Australia with our, with our dogs. So we'll wrap it up now and um, look forward to seeing you guys next week and uh, you guys have a good good week and good weekend coming up and we'll chat to you then. Go on, you guys. Thanks very much. Uber.